phone rings. There's only one person who knows where I am. My secretary, my executive sec confidential executive secretary. She knows where I am all the time because if the governor's trying to get you, he better be able to get you. So she always knew where I was. She said, Colonel, you need to turn the TV on if you don't have it on. I said, I don't have it on. I said, what's going on? She said, quick, turn the TV on. So I turned the TV on and I saw what was happening. The first plane had crashed into the World Trade Center. Uh, I said, I'll be at Pima. Almost immediately, the second plane crashes. So I just had gotten there when the second plane crashed. So from that point on, it was a matter of logistics as to what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. And I thought to myself, this is going to be bigger than what we think it's going to be. That was my thought. And I need to get people set up to handle any other emergencies that, that would arise. Basically, what I was thinking is there's going to be more here. Uh, it's big enough as it is, but we have to be prepared for any other contingencies. We have four or five and then, and then more passengers decide to take the, those terrorists on. Can you imagine that? You decide, you know what, they're not going to get away with it. They're, they are not going to go and crash into Washington. Just think about that. And uh, they took on professionally trained assassins. And they won. You know why they won? because they didn't achieve their objectives. The other ones did, 93 didn't because of the passengers. Uh, they were, when you talk about heroes, you know, that, that word is used so cavalierly. They were real heroes, you know, they, they knew what, what it meant. They were trying their best and, and given a few more um, seconds, minutes maybe, maybe they could have overcome those people. The gunner said, I want to go to the scene. I want to be, I need to be at the scene. So uh, we got on board the Chinook and we flew to Shanksville. What was interesting, because there was a no flight uh, mandate out there, we had to get authorization to do so. Uh, we got that authorization and uh, this is really eerie because it brings back such strong feelings and we lift off and we're heading out to Shanksville and on the way out now keep in mind what the mandates are out there on the way out I see something move out of the corner of my eye and I turn my head there's a fighter jet within I could see the pilot's eyes I turn to the right there's another fighter jet on either side of our Chinook wanting to take a look to make sure that we were legitimate and that we were the ones that had authorization to be in the air. Our troopers, our troopers were there within, literally within minutes, and there were more and more and more and more of them uh, just to secure the site and get things under control there that people don't start to uh, take things and, and, and affect the, uh, the integrity of the scene. Well, the top priority was to maintain the security, and I'll use the word sanctity, of the site, of the crash site. Let's get as many people out here as we need to secure the site and, and to start an investigation. Obviously, the question that comes up is, what was this? Was this an act of terrorism? Was this some type of uh, other act? Whose authority are we working under now? My decision, and the FBI concurred with it, was this is a federal case of terrorism. The intensity the grave intensity of facing 
mass death and the need to um, prevent any future ones, any future events like that, uh, by whatever means you can legally do it. How fragile our lives are, how they can change in a heartbeat. And uh, to be aware and to tell the people that you love them, that you care for them, and that you'll take care of them. Because sometimes we take for granted uh, you know, our lives. Well, they shouldn't be taken for granted. There are so many other uh, things about the practical part of being aware of what's going on, uh, being able to talk about uh, with other policemen, with other agencies, with other entities. You can almost feel like it's today. You can almost look at the, those pictures right there and say, I still feel that. I still feel what it was like on that helicopter ride to Shanksville. I still feel what it was like to walk down to the site. I still feel what it's like to see the families arrive and the troopers saluting. Uh, those types of things, I think that we, we can never and this is a little trite, you know, but you never, you never forget. And, and you always keep it in your mind and then you go from there. Thank God there are people who had the foresight, the wisdom uh, to plan, implement, and build uh, a, a, uh, a monument, a memorial to everybody that lost their lives and and keeps it keeps this spirit like we're doing right here alive <laughs>